And I am going to turn it over to Yvette. Good evening, everyone. And as Marcy said, let me reiterate, thank, welcome to tonight's session, um, our second in our series for Backpack for uh, Success. And tonight um, we are in session two out of four. So tonight we'll be focusing on organizing for the IEP meeting. Um, and you can see, then we'll pick it up again after the holidays in January for tips and tricks for supporting your child's learning without a fight. And then in February for um, data and, and you, data and you, understanding how data is used to determine your child's progress. So um, we are excited to share this series with you. Um, and hope you can join us for the next sessions as well. But before we get started tonight, let's do a little quick poll check-in. In the chat, put which number best describes how you're feeling about this school year so far. Is it one, it's been a little stormy, making you a little angry and frustrated. Is it number two, hopeful and optimistic? Number three, oh, it's a little cloudy, feel a little grumpy and stressed this school year, or number four, sunny, happy, and excited. How are you feeling about the school year thus far? Oh, we got a three, a little cloudy and grumpy. What else? Who else? How else? How are you feeling about this school year so far? Okay, we got a four, uh, sunny and happy. Excellent. All right. Okay. We're so excited for um, these responses. If you if you haven't, even if you haven't responded, if you're feeling like a, um, a, a two or a four, we're excited. We want to keep things like that. If you're feeling more like a one or a three, we're hoping that we're going to share some information tonight that's going to gain give you insights and information and help you feel more encouraged about this whole. IEP process. Thanks. Let me just shift things around here again. All righty then. So now we're ready to talk about what are some steps and strategies that we can take before the meeting even begins. Um, as we um, know that most people agree that preparing for the IEP meeting is key to building a plan that ensures uh, a successful meeting and plan development for your child. And the more that you have prepared for the meeting, the less stress you'll experience and hopefully the more collaborative that process will be. So we wanna keep a few things in mind as we approach planning for our meeting. The first thing to keep in mind is something that we alluded to in the little survey that we did, which is the law. There are laws that govern what we uh, can expect to happen at IEP meetings. And it's the IDEA, Individuals with Disabilities Education Improvement Act, and Maryland state laws require that all students with disabilities pro be provided with FAPE. FAPE stands for Free and Appropriate Public Education. And so all students with disabilities are entitled to that. That helps them learn and prepare for employment and daily living. This means that public school districts will provide individualized education, special education that, and related services to students with disabilities from ages birth to 21 or um, until they finish school. Students who leave high school prior to their 22nd birthday won't be eligible for these services. And we're gonna put a link at the end in the resource section for you to, for those of you who wanna know a little bit more about um, federal and state laws governing special education. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is what's the purpose of the meeting? And on your notice, it should tell you in advance what the purpose of the meeting will be. And that allows you to consider, does the stated purpose that the school is stating align with what I believe the purpose of the meeting should be? As we were preparing for this presentation, 
I actually sent a little survey to quite a number of people asking if there were some tips or information that we could share with parents who are preparing for the IEP meeting, what would they be? And one of the pieces of suggestions I found very, very intriguing and encouraging is prepare a list of your child's strengths in advance. Um, and we're gonna talk about that in another couple of seconds, but the other things to keep in mind are to find out who's gonna be present at the meeting, knowing who's gonna be present at the meeting and how many people are gonna be present is gonna be meaningful to some folks as you prepare yourself to participate. Gather information on the student's progress in advance and organize your thoughts and questions and concerns in advance. Another tip that was shared was review your procedural safeguards. So if you have a copy of your procedural safeguards and you can take time to review it in advance before the meeting, that's going to help you know what's your what are your rights. If you do not have one and you need a copy, you can ask your school team for another copy or we at the parent at the family support center can provide you another copy of your procedural safeguards. Some other things to consider is to inform the team of any intended guest attendees as we talked about in those little poll questions and inform the team if you want the meeting to be recorded. So hopefully all of you know that you have a right to request the meeting to be recorded, but it is important to let the team know that in advance so that they can have the devices available for that need. So we have another activity which requires your electronic device. Please, if you would, either navigate to this site or click the QR code so that you can participate in our tablet. And I'm gonna share a little bit with you more about why this is important. As you're going, as you're navigating to the site, we spend so much time at the IEP meeting talking about what's your child's disability and what's wrong and what are the challenges and what's, you know, what are the needs and a little bit of time talking about the strengths. And you could leave that meeting feeling pretty discouraged. It's important for you to have a reminder of what are your child's strengths. So if you would, take a couple of minutes and list what are some of your child's strengths. And they have, we have suggested categories here, but you can share if you can think of other categories of information as well. So there's strengths, academic strengths, recreational leisure strengths, daily living, activities of daily living, which is bathing, um, dressing, uh, doing chores at home. There are strengths in the community. Maybe there's following directions or participating at church or recreational activities. I love this event. We've got lots of responses coming in, leadership and problem solving and their student being curious and having high endurance in recreation and leisure and following a routine well. Yes, these are awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think somebody put curious. That is an excellent strength to list. Hopefully you're getting ideas from each other as you think about your child. What are some of your child's strengths? Polite to others, uh, high endurance, as Marcy said, volunteer. A kid, a child who's willing to volunteer is a, a strength that could go across so many life domains. Polite to other learning. Yes. Follows a routine. Where's that child? I want that child to come to my house. We'll give just another couple of minutes 
Again, hopefully you're thinking about new ideas, new ways that you can think about your child's strength. Works hard in math class. What's great about that is it's nice and specific. So while your child might be having trouble maybe in reading, but works hard in math class, we know that some of their academic performance is an area of strength. You can keep adding as you um, would like, but it's important to know that um, you, as you consider your child's strengths, that'll help you stay encouraged at the end of the meeting after talking about so many of the child's challenges. So for a quick recap, we've captured this in many different ways, but it's important to know who are the um, essentially required persons, the minimum required members to be at your IEP meeting. And they are usually a parent, a guardian, or a surrogate, not less than one special education teacher, and not less than one general education teacher, a representative of the local school or the local school system. If we're going to talk about evaluations, a person who can interpret those evaluations. And then, like we've shared in the previous uh, slides, other individuals at the discretion of either you, the parent, or of the local school system, others who might have knowledge or expertise about that student. And if appropriate, the student. Now we know students get invited at age 14 because that's the transition age. But if you feel your child is uh, uh, an, an eight-year-old who's engaged and interested and it's valuable to participate, children can be younger and participate in their IEP meetings as well. As a matter of fact, we at the Family Support Center have little um, portfolio templates that you can use if you would like to help your child become more of a self-advocate at a younger age and participate in those IEP meetings. Other things as you're preparing for your IEP meeting to consider is what are your thoughts and your observations? You are a vital, part of that IEP team. And back to when I mentioned that knowing how many people are going to be in attendance, you can feel outnumbered very easily at an IEP meeting, but know that you are a vital and important member of that team. It's important that you prepare in advance and have an opportunity to discuss your thoughts, what's important to you uh, for your child to work on some progress that you see being made or lack of progress that you've noticed. What concerns do you have? And you might have some thoughts about how the school can help. Well, share those. Those are important for the school to hear and to um, address. You can also consider preparing in advance your own written input statement. If you want to make sure what you see, notice, and observe is captured exactly like you notice it or you want it stated, you can prepare an input statement in advance for the parent um, parental uh, input section of the IEP. And you can share that in advance so it can be included in the IEP. Now we're gonna talk about how we categorize all these things shortly, but these this is a list not totally exhaustive of some items that you wanna to start to gather up before that meeting. Your current IEP and a draft. Can anybody think of why you wanna have both the current and the draft available of the IEP? It's a small group. You can unmute if you want, or you can put some Feedback in the chat. Why would it be important to have both the current IEP and the draft available? Any thoughts about that? Because we always have the draft and we're looking at the draft and we see what they say, what they're planning to do this next year. 
But what about comparing it to what's already in the existing IEP? You wanna notice if there's any differences, what's new, how are they gonna address things? Or are they addressing things in a new and different way? Before the IEP, it's important that you might wanna ask for some work samples. You have a right to ask for work samples from the school, from the teacher, from various teachers to get an idea of how that student is doing in various classes. You can ask for copies of assessments in advance, or maybe you don't know exactly where the, um, your state uh, assessment results are. You can ask for them before your IEP meeting because that could be an important piece of information that needs to be shared. <clears throat> report cards, gather up any report cards so you can look for trends. Um, evaluations that may be independent ones or ones that the school system has completed, progress reports, disciplinary reports, and communication logs if necessary. The whole idea is you're looking for trends where your child is making progress or areas where your child could be losing ground even or um, that your child needs some extra work on. <clears throat> so we have all this data, <clears throat> all this information, we've gotten all this stuff, what are we gonna do? We are sharing with you ideas for how you organize all of this information and you categorize it from one year to the next by setting up a portfolio, you can organize either an electronic folder or a traditional notebook style folder. What you wanna do regardless of what system you use is to create some sections. Some suggested sections include one for your prior written notices and your meetings your IEPs so that you can see from year to year, keeping your most current and recent items on top. Your work samples, you can also check your grades in Canvas. You can print out grades and, and, grades and um, information from Canvas and put in your portfolio. Um, you can highlight things that you have questions about as you're gathering up your data. You want a section on accommodations so that you can ask or keep a note of, is your child receiving these accommodations? It's important to know what they are. That's the only way you can verify that, right? Your evaluation section. And like we said, if you're calling or emailing um, staff back and forth at the school, have a section of a log of your phone calls and your emails so that you can keep track of who you spoke to and what the correspondences have been like. So let, Marcy has a little video clip there that we can see about the binder idea.
And one of the things I want to tell you is that we will be providing you with the links to some of these documents so that you'll have them and be able to use them in your own binder. Thank you so much. So we hope that that gave you an idea of how you can keep the traditional notebook sections of um, a binder to keep your records for your IEP. Um, you, if you would put in a chat, if you're the notebook kind of person, if you like paper and you still are a paper person, you like to see, feel, and touch, put that yes in the chat. And then for others of us, we're gonna talk about the electronic way of organizing for the IEP, but I want to point out a few things. <laughs> we have some yeses. I need a, a workshop session for this. Oh, you're not alone with feeling overwhelmed. It's a lot. It's a lot to keep up with. Um, one of the things that I want to note from the video is the color coordination. So if you are the paper type of person and notice you can get colored stickies and tabs, you could get um, highlighters um, so that you can really zero in on what you want to remember at the meeting. When you get to the meeting, it's so easy to lose track of where's this, what's that, where did I see this notation? And so these color coordination guides and tabs really help a lot. Now, if you're more tech savvy, there's a couple of ways you can do the same thing electronically. You could maintain electronic records on your hard drive and create this, this hierarchy, this prioritization. You prioritize how you want to see the files kept on your hard drive. So you would um, keep it labeled with a particular name and then you can create subcategories beyond that so that you can find these folders and organize information based on the level of importance. Because just because it's electronic doesn't mean that it's not hard to find. So Marcy is really, really good at um, coordinating folders electronically so we can find stuff. We're always saying, Marcy, where's that document? On the other hand, you if you have a Gmail account, you might want to keep a Google Drive and folder a record of your documents. That way you can have access to them anytime, anywhere. You do have to have a Gmail account, but if you do, you would then automatically have access to a Google Drive. And you would on your computer, go to your Google Drive, and then you would click new up there where over hour and hour picture, it's red, a red square, and you could create folders. And you could, and once you, you name your folder, you hit the word create, and then you would be able to um, create sections electronically. We often get a lot of information scanned to us by email these days. You also can download um, the Google uh, app to your phone if you really want to have all of this information at your fingertips. So on the next screen, it's meant to show you an example of how um, this actually happens to be mine, where we have um, a drive and then we have, you can color code your labels on your drive as well, so that you could get a visual of where things are. And then you could go to the next slide, Marcy, and create more subcategories. And I deliberately left some items out. Maybe you don't want to put everything in a folder. Maybe some things you want to be able to see that visual, but then other things you want to keep in that folder um, so that you'll be able to know where to find items, documents when you need them.
you can add, you can use a simple notebook for keeping track of who you talk to and what you talk to. But one of the final things that I wanted to share of preparation before the meeting, this is just an example of a little worksheet you could use before the meeting where you can fill out what are my concerns? And you could prioritize it because sometimes, hold on, I wish they had a translator from English to Spanish. I can't understand everything the lady is explaining. Oh, um, I am so sorry for whoever is having trouble with the Spanish translation. Miss Ileana, you typed something in the chat earlier. I'll try and find it so that I can copy and paste it to, to show how to access the Spanish. I've got it. Okay, thank you so much. All right, so this is an example of a sheet there. This one is, um, I got from Pacer, uh, pacercenter.com. They're actually based out of Minnesota and they have a lot of good uh, workshops and they I have listed them on our resource page, but they have this sample document that you could use to center and focus yourself as you're preparing for that IEP meeting. So you can prioritize what are your concerns and based on like, what is the information? Is it based on I'm watching my kid take three hours to do their homework every night and um, be exhausted or I'm watching tantrums come when math, when it's time to do math homework, but reading is not a problem. Uh, he or she loves to do the reading. And then you have another section to say, well, was that concern addressed at the meeting? Yes or no, or whatever categorization you wanna use. And then what was the results from what was discussed? So this is again, just a sample, but the important thing is for you to maintain a log of your communications and your concerns, and that will help make sure that your concerns are addressed and you're not leaving the meeting thinking, oh, I wish I would have said this. So I'm going to turn it over to Marcy to share some information with us now we're at during the meeting. So you've prepared, you have your binder, you have your electronic binder. Um, one thing that Yvette didn't mention that I thought of while she was talking is that if you've prepared things electronically for the um, meeting, you are welcome to bring a device in with you. If you have it on your phone or if you have it on a Google Chromebook or a laptop that you bring in and that's how you take notes, which we'll talk about in a couple of minutes, if that's what helps you stay organized and prepare for a meeting, if it's in person or if it's virtual, then you're welcome to bring that in with you. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what happens during the meeting. So coming into the meeting, if you are nervous or overwhelmed or feeling unprepared, please know that that's normal. Um, I, between the three of us, we've probably attended over a hundred IEP meetings um, over the last couple of years. And even I have been in education for 25 years, still get nervous when I go to IEP meetings because there are so many people there that have so much different knowledge. Um, but if, if you're coming in as a parent, come in with positive expectations. Bring your IEP binder or electronic records. Um, make sure you have email responses from teachers, for how things are going. Oftentimes IEP meetings go quickly and the teacher may say something in the IEP meeting that triggers you to remember something they said in an email. And so having that easy to find makes a lot of sense. Um, you are welcome to bring in any outside information. If you have new medical information, in fact, we encourage you to do that. Any outside provider information such as a therapist or a speech language therapist or something like that. Anything that pertains to your child and what they're doing in school and how it affects their IEP and their academics, please bring that in because you can share that with the team. Yvette mentioned student work samples. Um, sometimes I advise to, if your child's working on homework and you think it's something you're not necessarily gonna get back from the teacher, um, take a picture of it and make sure that because sometimes when a student has one-to-one -one intervention at school, 
their performance on something can be different than when they take it home and they no longer have the instruction right in front of them. So that's part of the parent input is how the student is performing at home on academic tasks. So what are you going to expect during the meeting? You should be made to feel welcome. You are a vital and important part of that IEP team. Your input is super valuable. Everyone should introduce themselves. Um, a lot of related service providers, school psychologists, things like that may cover many schools. So they may be someone that you have not met yet. So everyone at the beginning should introduce themselves. As educators, we use a ton of jargon. One of the things we have in our family support center is a dictionary of all of the abbreviations, well, probably not all of them, um, but a lot of the abbreviations that are used in, um, in education. So one of the things that I think we'll talk about in a couple slides is if you don't understand something, please ask. We talk about these educational acronyms all the time in our daily lives. We live them. And so oftentimes we try to avoid the jargon, but it doesn't happen. So if there are things you don't understand, make sure that you ask. It is your right to understand what's going on in that meeting. This team should focus on your child's individual needs. This is an IEP team that has been gathered for the purposes of planning for your students' academic or behavioral needs. And so you, the team should make sure that they're focusing on your child's needs. Um, and to that end, the team should maintain confidentiality. They should never mention another child's name in your meeting and your child should never be mentioned in another meeting. The team is required to keep this information confidential. And again, we can't reiterate this enough. Your opinion and knowledge are important. You are the one that spends the most time with your child um, and your input can clearly help. I was in an IEP meeting the other day, the student was having challenges in the classroom and come to find out he's having some medical challenges at home. And so that was kind of the aha moment that that was what was causing the challenges in the, in the classroom. But if the parent hadn't brought that information to the IEP team, the team never would have known. And then they were able to accommodate so that that can be improved. And Yvette really stressed this earlier, the team should focus on your child's strengths as well as their needs. Even because your child's strengths could lead to an accommodation or goal that builds upon those strengths instead of just addressing the deficit. I always encourage parents to take notes during the meeting. Um, if you usually take notes in your regular life electronically, certainly bring something to take notes electronically there. Um, if you do it on paper, make sure you have everything you need to take those notes. If you know that you're gonna be immersed in the IEP meeting and you will not be able to pay attention enough to take notes, ask someone to attend with you so that they can take those notes for you. Um, you just have to let the IEP team know that someone else is attending with you. Uh, like I said before, don't be afraid to ask questions. Be an active team member. One of the important things that I, I tell parents is that you are there to be a part of that process, but you have the right to clarify things in order to make an informed decision. So one of the things I want you to know is that just because you're in that IEP meeting and it's they're saying, okay, we have to wrap up. We've been here an hour and it's time. We have another meeting at two o'clock, say. You don't have to make a decision at the meeting if you're not sure. Um, I was in a meeting the other day where they were talking about changing the disability category and the parent was unsure. And so we decided to come back to the table the next time everyone was available. Please do not feel pressured to make a decision just because time is short. And the last Marcy, thing I want to, yes, go can ahead. Can I just share another example about deferring 
to think about your decision. In addition to Marcy's um, example, I also had an example that worked out well. This school system actually wanted to start including the child in general education classes. The parent had a lot of concerns and the parent was feeling pressured by the teen. And so that the parent didn't feel pressured and feel forced into a decision, the team agreed to come back in a couple of weeks. After the parent thought about it for two weeks, the parent came up with a few more questions, clarifying questions to ask. The parent did agree to uh, allow the child to begin attending some general education classes after being reassured of what uh, supports that student would have. So, and with that, we wanna make sure that you speak up if you have concerns. There are no concerns that are too little and no questions that are too small. So let's talk about what happens after the meeting. We told you that you have to be provided with the IEP and any evaluations prior to the meeting. It's five business days prior to the meeting. But there are some things that the team will need to provide you with after the meeting. And one of those is the PWN, which is listed here. It's a funny document. It's called the prior written notice, but it really comes after what happens in the IEP. And so planning for that next meeting begins right at the end of the current one. You'll wanna make sure you review your notes as if you have any questions or anything that you can address. Um, five business days after the IEP meeting, they'll provide you with the PWN and the final IEP. Um, and the PWN notes uh, what happened in the meeting, any major things that were proposed in the meeting, why they were either accepted or rejected, and then what the final decision was in the meeting and any notes that need to follow about that as well. Um, you'll wanna follow up with any of the team members on any items as they're identified in the meeting. And you'll wanna file any of your new forms or documents using either the electronic system or the, um, the paper system that you were using. So just some final tips after the IEP meeting. Please stay calm and hear them out so you can respond and not react. That's really hard. They're talking about your child, right? And sometimes when we're in those meetings and the struggles are not only academic, but they're behavioral or they're social emotional, um, sometimes it's really hard to hear those things about your child, especially if you are looking at behaviors or academic things that occur at school, but they don't occur at home. But you wanna stay calm and hear them out so that you can provide a response and not be completely reactive. We said there's no bad questions, but we also want you to know that it's okay to have emotions and be human. This is about your child who's the most important person in your life. And so having those emotions is okay and letting the team know that maybe you need a break or maybe you need to come back to the table is absolutely allowed. Um, not everybody gets along with everybody else. And sometimes when we're hearing things about our child that aren't the most um, celebratory or you know, their negative things, we want you to know that that's okay to have the emotions, but in order to come out with an IEP that addresses those things, we want you to stay focused on the facts and your rights and the IEP process and not necessarily the people in the room. Um, you have a right to know the timeline, to know when your next meeting is going to occur and how it fits in with prior meetings. Um, one of the things we talked about in our first session is that timeline of when reevaluations and annual evaluations, annual re annual IEP meetings occur. Um, so sometimes the next meeting might not be your annual IEP meeting. It may be a meeting to talk about doing new types of assessments. 
And so you want to know how your meetings fit in with prior meetings. And then you want to know what's expected of if there's a new goal or new accommodations, what's going to be done in six months, nine months, what's the long-term plan, and that'll help you to start preparing for the next meeting.